Now we have the stomach. The stomach is a sac-like J-shaped structure 25 to 30 centimeters long. Stomach is a J-shaped structure which is 25 to 30 centimeters long and is situated on the left side. So, we say that the stomach is here, the stomach is here, the stomach is here. And it is here. The next time, we say that it is here, it is here. So, sir, here is the stomach on the left side, J shaped and 25 to 30 centimeters long. It consists of three parts, namely a part called cardiac, fundus, and pylorus. Esophagus opens into a part which is called as the cardiac stomach. So, this part is the cardiac stomach. Cardiac stomach ke upar a dome shaped part hota hai, which is called as the fundus. If you remember, in uterus also, body cervix ke upar ka dome shaped part is the fundus. Similarly, stomach ke under ye cardiac part ke upper upper part comes the fundus. And we have fundus, we have cardiac, and the main body or cardiac, and then we have a lower part which opens into the intestine, small intestine. And that part is called as the pylorus. So esophagus opens into the cardiac stomach, cardiac ke upper we have fundus and cardiac opens into a small part called pylorus and then opens into the small intestine. The sphincters are there at both ends of the stomach. Stomach ke dono end pe ek ek sphincter hota hai. Sphincter, we remember there are urethral sphincter and sphincter close and open and opening. Similarly, Esophagus opening into stomach is guarded by a group of circular muscles which is called as the cardiac sphincter. So, here is the cardiac sphincter. And stomach opens into the duodenum, that is the small intestine guarded by a sphincter which is called as the pyloric sphincter. And Cardiac sphincter is closed, pyloric sphincter is closed, and the stomach at the moment is empty. Now, when you eat food, subse pele in esophagus there will be peristalsis, cardiac sphincter will open, and food will enter into the stomach. As soon as entry of food is over, stomach will start churning the food. It churns the food at that time. Pyloric sphincter is closed and cardiac sphincter also closes and the stomach will churn the food for 3 to 4 hours. In some cases 4 to 5 hours. As a closed chamber, the food will be churned and solid food will become liquefied. And both the cardiac sphincter and pyloric sphincter are closed. What will happen if cardiac sphincter opens? Stomach will churn and the acidic content will regurgitate back into the esophagus. So, reflux ho jayega. That has to be prevented so the cardiac center is closed. And once the churning process is over, all the solid food becomes liquefied. Now, the pyloric center opens and slowly food goes from the stomach into the duodenum. That is called as gastric emptying. And gastric emptying takes place for 45 minutes to 1 hour. For 45 minutes to 1 hour, the stomach becomes empty and food enters into the duodenum. So that's your stomach. And then we have the small intestine. The small intestine is the longest part of the digestive system. Subse lamba panza hai small intestine. 6 meters long and 2.5 centimeters broad. What is the length of the small intestine? 6 meters. How much is the thickness of the small intestine? 2.5 centimeters. And it is compactly coiled in the abdominal cavity and is held together by peritoneum, which is called mesentery. So, intestine is also held by peritoneum called mes. Enteric. Mes enteric. Enteric means intestine. 
massa of the intestine that is peritoneum of the intestine is called mesentery and you remember the third uh, what is the support of the uterus called mesometrium fallopian tube mesosalpage ovary mesovarian similarly intestine ka support kon hai mesoenteric or mesentery support the small intestine and the small intestine is divided into three parts namely we have duodenum jejunum and ileum duodenum is a u shaped part about 25 cm long so sir if this is your stomach then this is your duodenum which is a u shape or a c shaped part and is about 25 cm long so how long is esophagus sir 25 cm how long is stomach 25 cm how long is duodenum 25 cm and the duodenum is u shaped 25 cm long by duct and pancreatic duct open into the duodenum from the liver comes the duct called as the bile duct and from the pancreas here comes the duct called as the pancreatic duct and bile duct and pancreatic duct open into the duodenum as something called the hepatopancreatic duct and hepatopancreatic duct will break from the liver by bile will enter into the duodenum from the pancreas pancreatic juice will enter the duodenum and a lot of enzymes are there so lot of digestion takes place golden word maximum digestion takes place in the duodenum so chhota sa 25 cm part hai lekin sabse zyada digestion duodenum mein hota hai and from duodenum the food passes into jejunum which is 2.5 meters long and narrower than the duodenum it is 2.5 meters long and narrower than the duodenum is the jejunum jejunum the peristalsis hota hai and then food enters the ileum which is the lower part of the small intestine which is 3.5 meters long and opens into the large intestine so ileum is 3.5 meters jejunum is 2.5 meters and duodenum is 25 cm so what is the total length of the small intestine 25 cm 2.5 meters 3.5 meters 3.5 meters plus 2.5 meters 6 meters and 25 cm 6 meters and 25 cm is the small intestine which is the lowest part sir ileum and ileum opens into the large intestine 3.5 meters and ileum is where maximum amount of absorption takes place so golden word where the maximum digestion takes place in the duodenum and where the maximum absorption takes place from the ileum and whatever is absorbed is taken into blood and assimilated in the cells whatever is not absorbed passes into the large intestine so sir the last part of the digestive system the large intestine the large intestine is a 1.5 meter long structure arranged around the small intestine in the form of a question mark ye hai large intestine shaped like a question mark shaped like a question mark is large intestine 1.5 meters long it has three distinct parts cecum colon and rectum cecum colon and rectum the ileum opens into a small part which is called cecum a small blind sac of the colon and present at the junction of the ileum and the colon there is a junction a band called as the ileocecal band so sir if you see this carefully ye hai small intestine and yahan par hota hai a blind sac which is called as the cecum we have cut that sac off 
five seekers, and here we have a valve. That valve is called as the ileocecal valve. From ileal, fecal matter passes into the cecal and is called as the ileocecal valve and it enters into the cecal. And the entry of the ileum into the cecal is found a small worm like structure. We all have heard of it in school called as the appendix. Appendix is a small worm like structure which is found in humans and mammals. Hum log kehte hai, appendix is the vestigial part of the human body. But actually, appendix is functional in herbivores for the digestion of cellulose. Sir, appendix se cellulase naam ka ek enzyme banta hai and it digests cellulose. So not us, but sir, grass eating animals. Cows, buffaloes, bear, horses, jo log khas kaate hai, we can digest grass. But they eat grass, grass is full of cellulose and their appendix produces cellulase enzyme which will help in digestion of the cellulose. So cellulose digest kiya jata hai with the help of cellulase. So its ulk appendix does not have any function as far as digestion is concerned. But just for knowledge, appendix is not completely vestigial in humans. Appendix may bohat sare WB field but there. White blood cells which are called as lymphocytes. White blood cells called as lymphocytes are produced in your appendix. So appendix may lymphocytes now get white blood cells but there. It is not completely vestigial. From the cecal, food passes into the colon. And colon is the actual question mark like structure. Colon has four parts. Something called as ascending colon, then we have transverse colon, then we have descending colon, and an S shaped part which is called as the sigmoid colon. Ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid. Ye ho gaya ascending colon. ये हो गया ट्रांसफर्स कोलोन ये है डिफेंडिंग कोलोन और ये है एस शेप सिग्मोइड कोलोन एंड फिकल मैटर पास थ्रू दिस कोलोन एंड एंटर्स इनटू द रेक्टम द रेक्टम इज द पोस्टीरियर रीजन अबाउट 15 टू 20 सेंटीमीटर लॉन्ग रेक्टम आल्सो हैज लॉन्जिट्यूडिनल फोल्ड एंड लार्ज ब्लड वेसल्स and rectum mein longitudinal folds hote hai unhe hostra kehte hai so I'll just show you here we have the longitudinal folds which are called as hostri so these are called as hostri ye line degree aapko isse hostri kehte hai and rectum has been a lot of blood vessels तो ये है रेक्टर और ये है इनस और यहां बहुत सारे ब्लड वेसल होते हैं एंड इनस इज द लास्ट पार्ट एंड इनस इनस इज वेयर द रेक्टर ओपन्स टू द आउटसाइड इट इज गार्डेड बाय अ स्फिंक्टर व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एज द इनर स्फिंक्टर इट रिमूव्स अनडाइजेस्टेड पार्ट आउटसाइड बाय प्रोसेस कॉल्ड एज तो ये है एनस और यहाँ एक स्पिंटर होता है द स्पिंटर गार्ड द ओपनिंग ऑफ द लार्ज इंटरस्टाइन टू द आउटसाइड हेल्प इन द प्रोसेस पॉइंट एज डिफिकेशन चल विद दैट वी हैव एनालाइज द एंटायर डाइजेस्टिव ट्रैक एंड आई हैव सम नाइस थिंग्स टू टेल यू बिफोर वी एंड द लेक्चर बहुत सारे केसेस में पीपल है कॉन्स्टिपेशन उनके बॉबल्स बराबर से पास भी हो रहे हैं एंड सर डेट इज ईसा गोल्ड डल्कोलेक्स लो फ्लैक्स ऐसे बहुत सारे कैस्टरॉइड बहुत सारे ऐसे सप्लीमेंट्स लेते हैं लेकिन फीसी पास नहीं हो रहे उनको 
So, sir, all the fecal matter gets collected in the rectum and they have to exert a lot. So, उनको बहुत exertion करना पड़ता है defecation के लिए और कई बार बहुत ज़्यादा exertion करते हुए fecal matter passes out. But do you remember I told you that the rectum has in it lot of blood vessels and along with the fecal matter passing out, lot of blood vessels from the rectum pass out and once blood vessels pass out through the anus out, they start feeling a sensation in the anus and they are having protrusion of rectal veins to the outside which is scientifically called as pi. I'm sure you have heard of it. Piles for logo hai. Piles for scientifically hemorrhoids get there. Piles are also called hemorrhoids. What is piles or hemorrhoids? Protrusion of the rectal veins through the anus is called as piles or hemorrhoids. And if they are not treated, the piles may rupture and blood loss ho sakta hai. So, in ki ek urgent surgery karmi patti hai, just me protruded blood veins are cut off or unko suture kiya jata hai. And sir, the patients are advised to eat soft food which does not cause any further problems of piles. So, piles or hemorrhoids is the case. And today we talk about something very nice for all of you who are budding in the dentist. Sir, ye dye ne kya kya? Sir, I hope you remember this is your tooth. And sir, your doctors always advise you please brush your teeth at least twice a day. And sir, when are you supposed to brush your teeth? We all get up in the morning and brush our teeth. Actually, in the morning, just gargle. Have your breakfast and then brush your teeth. And at night, before you sleep, brush your teeth. So when you get to the night, you should brush your teeth. Why sir? Because many times this happens. Sir, you eat at night and food gets collected in between your teeth. And this food now gets stuck in your teeth and passes from the crown of the tooth into the neck part. And neck part me chala jata hai. And then food in the night passes along with bacteria. Yaha baat mouth pe bacteria hote hai. That passes, bacteria passes through your dentine, through dentine into small bony openings which are called as canaliculi and through canaliculi which are openings in the dentine, the food along with bacteria passes inside the pulse cavity and you know the pulse cavity is full of blood vessels Blood vessels get a lot of sugar is available and bacteria love sugar and bacteria in the presence of sugar start multiplying rapidly and pulse cavity ke under bohar sara pus jama honne lagta hai and pus gets accumulated it stimulates your nerves if you remember pulse cavity has blood vessels and nerves the nerves get stimulated and you start getting a toothache. So you go to your dentist and your dentist says, what is happening to you, beta? Uh, you say, uh, Dr. Zahab, I'm having a severe pain in my tooth. He says, let's take an X-ray of your tooth and he takes an X-ray and finds there is a pus everywhere inside your tooth. He tells you, you have got root infection and we will have to treat you by something called as a root canal treatment. I'm sure many of you have undergone the root canal treatment. Many of you will undergo a root canal treatment. So for all of you budding dentists over here, what will you do in a root canal treatment?
okay, the adult treatment. The doctor takes the, the dentist takes the uh, X-ray and he finds out कौन कौन से दांत के अंदर पक जमा हुआ है. And then he will make you lie down, make you comfortable. He will take a small little syringe with an anesthesia medicine and put it in the gums. So gums के अंदर वो anesthetic chemical डाल दिया जाता है. And anesthesia of your tooth takes place. And once the anesthesia is done, you have no sensation in your mouth. Now he will make you lie down. He takes a rotating blade, and that rotating blade is put in the enamel, and he pushes the pedal. This rotating blade starts moving at a speed of 3,000 RPS. 3,000 rotations uh, RPS. 3,000 rotations per second. This speed se rotate hone wala hai. Pointed tip. It cuts. Through your enamel. If you remember, the enamel is the hardest part of the body. It can still cut through the enamel. So you literally drill a hole in the enamel and then a hole in the dentine till you reach the pulp cavity. So now we have literally created a hole in the pulp cavity. Then he removes the rotating needle. He takes a thin pipe. And that pipe is put inside the canal. So, the canal के अंदर वो pipe डाल दिया जाता है. And once the pipe enters the pulp cavity, this pipe is outside connected to a small little accelerator जैसा एक छोटा सा stepper होता है. उसको press करते हैं. And water will enter into the pipe. And why the pipe? Water enters your pulp cavity. And the entire pulp cavity is now filled with water. And then he removes this pipe, and the canal is open. Inside it, he puts a suction tube, and he presses the accelerator. Suction tube के अंदर एक suction चालू होता है, and all the contents of the pulp cavity are Fucked outside. Sub kuch, pass, water, blood capillaries, nerves, everything is sucked outside. So your pulp cavity becomes completely empty. Pura pulp cavity khali ho jata hai. Now, you cannot tell it to remain like an empty vacuum. So we put in cement. Bone cement. A special cement called as a bone cement is put inside, and the entire pulp cavity is filled with bone cement. And bone cement यहाँ तक ऊपर में आ जाता है, और इसके ऊपर यहाँ enamel में जो hole है, जो dentist will put a root cap. Root का एक capping डालते हैं. And so that root cap, yes, to yours were made of silver, gold. As a matter of fact, when I had a child, I was a child. I had a root canal done, and I got a silver root cap. It's still there. But nowadays, gold, silver, obnoxious. Dentists uh, advise let's put a porcelain, porcelain root cap, and that porcelain root. Cap is put over it, which has the same color and the texture of the tooth itself, and the root capping is done, and you have just undergone a beautiful procedure called as the root canal treatment. So, ये बहुत सारे मेरे जो dentist students हैं यहाँ पर, you all are going to be using this as your basic dental practice. Everyone will come to you for a root canal treatment, and this is the way we'll do a root canal treatment. Chal. So today we had a nice, simple lecture, very, very basic lecture. Next lecture onwards, we go into the details of the digestive system. Beautiful chapter, mazaa hai wala. Hmm? Chal. Take care. God bless you. See you soon. Bye bye.